Alright, welcome back. So tonight we are going to do spin fillets. Um, I'll start with a little trick I picked up from a guy on YouTube. You decide what you're going to use for your radius. Um, typically it's a popsicle stick. It seems to work pretty well. But even if you're going to use something else, one of the things you can do to get good straight lines for where to put your masking tape, take a popsicle stick and you use a Sharpie marker and it's already dry now, but uh, just color up the end real good. And then run your radius through your fin and body tube area where your fillet is going to go and it draws nice beautiful masking lines Um, the cradle is real simple. It's half inch PVC with pushed together elbows and tees. Um, the that's a pool noodle actually. <laughs> it was cheaper to do a pool noodle than um, pipe insulation. I think the day I went and got the PVC and everything, the pool noodles were on sale for like $1.99. So, um, and I picked up just a cheap, you know, $10 PVC pipe cutter or whatever. Um, you know, you could spend a little more on one. Um, you do get a ratcheting one with a razor blade. I'm sorry if that's really loud. I don't know how loud that's going to be in the video. I just realized that. So I apologize if that is an unbearable noise. As you can see, I didn't like glue my pool noodles down or anything. And I didn't do any caps like a lot of guys do. Um, total amount was that was just a five foot piece of PVC. Um, I believe I cut the main legs at 12 inches each and then these sections uh, I don't know maybe six inches or something uh, I might have just guessed too who knows anyway it's pretty decent um, I do need to extend these a little bit so I'll probably get another five foot piece make another cradle like this and then get another piece where I can pop these legs out and pop in longer legs for larger diameter or larger fin spans and that kind of stuff. So anyway, fillets are pretty simple. But like anything, it's all about the prep work. So I'm just masking off along that line I just created. Um, here goes my glasses. And the reason we do this is because this whole area is going to be filled with epoxy and then I'll take 
either that same one or another popsicle stick and after it starts to set up a little I'll run a radius through it and then we will get a nice fillet in between the two surfaces um, and obviously strengthen the bond quite a bit. Uh, one area I've never been real certain of and haven't seen a lot of detail on is you know what to do up here. I think some guys just leave it right at a point. Um, I might actually try to make a small radius there. I haven't decided yet. Yeah, holy shit. Super exciting stuff, huh? Exactly on the line, but that's okay. As long as it's pretty close. Yeah. Pray help if I didn't do it upside down, huh? to a point. I'll actually probably add two or three other pieces of masking tape just to make sure I don't have any overflow onto the body of the rocket itself. Other than the area I want. Um, I'm still using the West Systems Epoxy, but I'm going to add a lot of filler to it to really thicken it up. Um, like I said, I'll probably, I haven't decided yet, um, how tacky I want it or how, you know. Depends on how thick I get it. You know, if you, if you have a real runny, viscous epoxy, obviously you have to wait for it to start to set up before you can actually do your radiuses. Um, otherwise, it's just, it's not going to hold the shape. Um, and that's part of the whole point of doing this is to make sure you get that good curve shape, that good blend between the two surfaces there. So, you know, a radius between the 90 degree. Um, but that's also why you add fillers, uh, to thicken up your epoxy so it can hold shape better. Some guys use, um, like epoxy, uh, basically epoxy putty sticks. Um, I hear that's not bad other than the fact that, you know, the, the epoxy clay or putty sticks, you know, obviously you can roll it in a snake and just cram it down in there with your finger. Um, another trick to get a real smooth surface there is you take some rubbing alcohol on a rubber glove and once the, the epoxy starts to really get kind of tacky, you can go down and smooth out the, the top surface like that with rubbing alcohol. Um, and it'll have a nice smooth finish to it. Um, generally speaking, because this rocket isn't finished yet, um, they're gonna get sanded a half a dozen times yet. Um, oh, you know what? That's something I should do. I didn't even think of. Well, I'm sure it'll be fine. This is a pretty poor surface. Um, I might run a little bit of 80 grit down the body too, where the fill is going to go. Just to rough up that, that uh, top glassine surface. So let me do that. Let me uh, sand that stuff real quick. Uh, finish masking and then I will come back.
Because that's all boring shit anyway. Alright, so did some rough sanding and finished off all my masking real quick. Um, actually took a dinner break and whatnot, but hey, that's the power of video magic. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is uh, the area of the fillets. I'm going to mix up some epoxy and get this done because it's getting late. Um, I am going to be using that filler. So we're just going to do one pump of each. Um, just because I don't know exactly how much I need, honestly. So, you know, I'd rather, you know, have enough to get one or two fillets done and then have to mix up more than to have like way extra because, you know, epoxy isn't cheap. This is where I definitely suggest you don't use a five minute epoxy. Um, a couple of reasons, you know, most quick cure epoxies aren't as strong as a long cure epoxy. Um, it's just got to do with the way the chemical reaction happens and that kind of stuff. Um, Granted, you know, the amount of forces we're talking about or differences between the two are pretty, you know, it's it's pretty high. It's not that a five-minute epoxy would fail because it wouldn't. I've done fillets with five-minute epoxy. Um, the biggest reason is because you don't have much time at all. And if it's a little too warm in your space, um, you know, those quick cure epoxies have a tendency to flash really fast, you know be halfway done through a fillet and go to get more epoxy and it's you know like laffy taffy by then you're like shit oh, and I should definitely have gloves on and I'm just going to do a semi bubble scoop here hear my cat in the background Trying to go outside. He's gotten spoiled. He likes to chase the lightning bugs. It's absolutely adorable, but it's also a pain in the butt. Because then you gotta stand around for half an hour and watch a cat chase lightning bugs. And he always seems to miss them. I don't, you know, like he'll, every time, it's like every direction he turns is the area they're not. I've literally seen lightning bugs six inches behind his head, and he'll just, oh, what? It's not the brightest. But we love him. Yeah, we do, Mr. Lou. You're going to be infamous on YouTube. That might have actually been too much filler. I don't know. It's not uh, mixing up. I mean, it's thickening up the way I wanted it to, for sure, but it's. Taking a little longer in the mixing time. Oh, the consistency is so good. It's like a pancake batter, maybe, or at this point, a creamy, warm peanut butter. No, Mr. Lou. Great. I've been waiting and you know, we, we ate dinner and dishes were done and all this other stuff and so I was waiting for everything to quiet down so I could film this and then of course the cat starts. <laughs> Such is life. Um, anyway, fillets, yeah, I wouldn't suggest using anything less than a 30 minute epoxy on them. Um, especially if you're going to add a filler because as you can see how long this is taking me to get a good thorough homogeneous mix um obviously on a five minute epoxy i would be running the risk of 
it flashing on me. Oh, that's, yeah, look at that. That's perfect. It's absolutely perfect consistency. And in a moment, we'll see why we get some gloves on. Just, like I said before, Epoxy 101, gloves. Um, I've seen videos and guys who've been doing epoxy work for literally years or for a living. And um, no matter how careful you are, it will get everywhere. Yes, Mr. Lou. Well, this is going to take more than I thought. That's okay. So we're just going to goop it down here in the crevice. Um, you could have it a little thinner if you wanted to be able to actually just kind of pour it in. Um, I'm just kind of sculpting it and putting it in place here. This will not be the final radius. Um, I'll actually let this sit up a little first and then redo my radii. But this is just to actually initially get it, you know, really down in there, penetrate that crevice as it were. Most of people are going to have fun with that. Mr. Lou is definitely not happy. <laughs> it's a very upset pussy cat. Yeah, we spoiled him with taking him outside to go bug hunting at night. It's, uh, I don't remember what time it is here now, a little after nine, I think. So. I'll actually probably keep this one short. I'm just going to show you guys the general process I have picked up on. Another reason you uh, should use a thicker epoxy, obviously, is it just will hold its shape better, um, but also for drying reasons. Um, if it's a real runny epoxy, there's a chance that it will, you know, run off the back, the back of the rocket or, you know, if you wanted to do more than one side at once, which this will probably be thick enough. I don't have to worry about, I could roll this over and know that this box is pretty much going to stay in place, mostly. Yeah. And like I said, it doesn't matter how careful you are. Catch it right away, you can just wipe it off if you realize it after the fact. Um, rubbing alcohol. I'm going to flip that over, but I'm going to keep an eye on that to make sure it doesn't run too much and it doesn't look like it is, so that's good. Maybe, maybe you have enough. 
have to do all three of them. I have a feeling I'm going to have to mix up some more. Maybe. We'll see. I'm going to get it in all the spots first. But this is why you mask everything off. Because you want to make sure you actually have enough epoxy to you know, bind both surfaces. Um, as far as the front of the wing, I, I have yet to find a real good definitive answer on how you should round that off or bring it to a point or whatever. It's kind of just, I don't know, whatever suits you, I guess. Um, I have yet to perfect my own technique. this out here as I can. Like I said, most people, you know, if it's runny enough, you can just kind of pour it in and fill that whole span. Um, so if it is a runnier epoxy, obviously you, you might have to be limited to doing just you know, two fins at a time until it sets up enough. So if you are gonna use a quick cure, like a five minute, you know, it'll probably be pretty pretty viscous. You'll probably be able to just fill two at a time and let it sit, you know, if you have to time it, give it four minutes or four and a half minutes to when it gets starting to get tacky. And then run your your popsicle stick or whatever. Um, there's multiple different tools. This is obviously the most convenient and cheapest. Um, I think you can actually. I think somebody sells um, actual fillet tools, which it kind of looks like a uh, real. Really, it looks like a ball bearing on a, on the end of a rod. Um, else have I seen people use um, batteries yeah just got epoxy on my glasses yeah I need new glasses as you can tell these ones are getting kind of old and they keep falling off my face Um, fillets are a fine art. You know, I've done them on multiple different rockets now, and every single time it's a different experience. And I learn something every single time I do it. Um, whether it's how long I wait for setup time or how I mask off, um, it's one of those things, they're not going to be perfect the first few times you do them. So do not, you know, expect that or be upset if they're not. Um, the great thing about fillets is it's one of those areas that, you know, you do before you paint, or should anyway. And you're going to sand the freaking hell out of them to make them smooth and they're going to get painted over. So I've seen some fillets that were, you know, people did with putty, like an epoxy putty or clay that were, you know, looked like kindergarten arts and craft day. And, you know, somebody was trying to make a snake or something. And, um, yeah, I need to make them more. That's good though. I'd rather run out than have 
way too much. Um, I've heard of people doing two-part fillets where they'll do uh, like uh, you know, epoxy putty first, a real small one. Um, there's kind of a, especially if they have a bigger gap between the fin and the body tube. Um, and then they'll do, you know, a, a liquid epoxy on top of it. Um, I've asked a few people about that. And the general consensus I get is that um, it's questionable because then you have two different layers of bonding, basically. Not that it's not plausible, but basically what a lot of people said was that they really didn't know enough about the chemical nature of bonding one kind of epoxy to another. Um, so if anybody watches this and has any info on that, that would be great. Um, in theory, you would think it would be great. Um, but the concern there is that it'll actually potentially weaken the bond. Um, so I don't know. All right. And yeah, I only got half a fillet on this one, and that's okay. You know, this is another reason you use a young, a longer cure epoxy because shit like this happens. You know, low power kits, you could just do this with your finger and white glue. You know, you got a little Estes kit that, you know, flies in an A, B, or C engine. Yeah. Let's see if I have enough excess on any of these others to at least finish off this one. not the end of the world. Um, this epoxy, especially like for fillets, West system and with fillers is really nice because, you know, if you leave it in the pot, you're only going to get, according to their instructions, nine to 12 minutes, but that's for a hundred gram batch. So that would be like four pumps on a single pump. It'd probably be more like 20, 20, 30 minutes. Um, as far as using only a half a pump, I would not suggest it. Uh, I've never actually tried that. You know, um, that is the problem with using West Systems is it's great that they have this dispenser system, but it can also be inconvenient at times when you need smaller batches, for example, like this. And I probably should have mixed that epoxy better first before I added the filler, but hey, whatever. You know, um, I don't know what the exact weight or total amount per pump is. I think it's like 0.8 ounces or something like that. I don't remember. So now my other cat's playing with her favorite thing in the world, packing material. And you know, I'm gonna have to look up, or maybe contact West Systems about possibly sifting this filler first. Um, it, it does come out pretty clumpy. Um, it's such a light density filler that it's very susceptible to not only moisture, um, oh, it's, it's silica. So obviously it absorbs moisture. 
which is also a good filler to use for epoxy because then it makes sure that you know you don't get any water in your epoxy if for whatever reason you had to or you know it's definitely going to be waterproof um well that's the thing about west systems their, their entire line of epoxies are designed around boats so Now, obviously, you don't have to do this size of a fillet. Um, you could do bigger. You could do smaller. You could use your finger if you wanted to. I've just found that, personally, this is one of the easier, easier methods. Well, this is good. I have enough now that I can go back over some of them and make sure they're not... Too weak. I don't know if any of you noticed, but I added a second line of masking tape on the center of my rocket. Just because I know how messy this is. Um, I will say this much about doing fillets. If you can get them all done in one shot like this without getting, you know, your entire work surface and rocket covered in epoxy, that's a really good start. Um, Cause one thing that sucks, you know, and this, I've had this happen with the quick cure stuff is, you know, it's so runny that you can only do two at a time. Well, then you got to wait and yeah, okay. It says five minutes. Well, trust me, it is not cure or stiff within five minutes. It'll be to the point where you can't really work it. Um, but gravity is a tenacious motherfucker. I've actually had, you know, epoxy that I was having difficulty spreading because it was so tacky and thick already and flip the rocket over and I'm working on another side and have the whole fillet shift or slide off the rocket. And you're like, wait a minute, like, that's kind of crazy. I think I just figured out something new on the tips. Yeah, like that. Back of the fins is another tricky area that I still have yet to actually master. It's just one of those spots. And this particular rocket, it's it's a little trickier too because of the way the fins end. Yeah, as you can tell by the number of times I'm going over each one of these, I am not by any means a master at this yet. Um, or estimating how much epoxy I need because I've got a lot of left over now. Like I said, I'm not sure about doing partial pumps on the West Systems stuff. You gotta be careful too, because if your angle of your radius changes, it will change the how deep the radius goes into in between the two surfaces. So try to keep that in mind. Um, you could end up with uneven fillets. Don't worry so much about um, how 
aerodynamic or not the fillets are because like I said in finishing you're going to sand these and smooth them and sand them and smooth them and on and on and on. <coughs> Fillet serve first main purpose is a, a good strong bond between fin and body tube. Now, granted, this particular kit has through the wall fins, so that helps obviously. Um, yeah, I never know what to do with the ends here, I just kind of sculpt it around. Do keep in mind that fillets and retainers and all that stuff add weight. Um, I'm not too concerned about it on this kit. Uh, the center of gravity, as far as I remember, I have to look it up again, is pretty far forward in the center of pressure. So like I said, I'm not too concerned about it on this particular kit. Um, but in other kits, it may be a problem. Okay, I'm liking that. And yeah, you know, it's like I went just shy with one pump, and now I've got, yeah, this much extra. But this is a really good thickness. Um, you don't have to buy West Systems brand filler. You can use other fillers. Um, for example, my father, when we used to work on his boat and we were doing, it was a ferrule cement hull and we were fiberglassing, basically putting a, an epoxy resin, uh, shell on it. Um, we actually used sawdust as a filler. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with those. They're not running. They're all pretty much the same size or so. Um, so I'm gonna let that set up and take my cat out so he'll stop freaking out. And um, yeah, after this, I may do a video. Um, I'll probably show just the peeling off process and whatnot. And then the next set of videos is I will cover some of the recovery stuff and how I attach my parachute and shock cord and whatnot. Um, Cause I don't just straight tie it. Um, I actually like to use swivels. I, I gotta figure out something to keep those from, you know, when I turn the rocket in the cradle, it pops the foam things off. So anyway, uh, yeah, so next video will be I'll be doing uh, attaching the recovery process uh, the shot cord and the chute uh, as well as a chute protector um, And then I'm, I hope to fly it this weekend And get my certification and then I will do a series on painting it because I still haven't decided what colors I want to paint and maybe I'll ask for suggestions. I don't know. All right. Thank you. Okay, well, I started peeling the tape probably a little sooner than I, than most people would have. Um, it's still uh, wet and malleable enough that I could shape it if, if I needed to. Um, what was left in here, um, I had piled all on one side of the container. And uh, that's hard. All the stuff that's spread out thinner is not, and it's like hot to the touch. Always remember that about epoxy. Exothermic. Um, shit gets hot. But while I was peeling some of this tape, because it was a thick enough mix that I don't have to worry about it running or anything, uh, usually, you know, if it's a thinner mix, you're going to want to let it set up quite a bit. Um, but same thing. Usually if it's a thinner mix, it's a quicker cure time because 
the West systems, once you spread it out and thin it, you know, is a thin coat. Um, I think it's working time. And this is their fast hardener is like 60 to 90 minutes. Um, but like I said, I'm not too worried about it running or anything. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and start peeling it now. I'm seeing little areas that like could use just a little bit of reshaping. Um, but I did figure something out with masking. Um, and I think it'll help out a lot. And that is, as you're masking up your rocket, the pieces of masking tape that are gonna end up closest to the fillet, do that last um, so that they can be the first piece pulled off easily and they're not under several layers of other bits of tape, you know. Um, the other reason to wait a little longer is so that when you're peeling your tape, you know, if, if your epoxy is set up enough that it's not you know, that it's maybe just tacky or whatever and you don't have to wear gloves then and it's a little easier to peel the tape. <laughs> and you're not going to get epoxy everywhere. Yeah, the way I mask this off is going to be a little, it's a little tricky. Um, and you know, the other way to do it too is, you know, you put paper down and then tape over top of that. Um, get uh, epoxy all over the rocket and everything else. Like I said, I should have actually probably let it set up a little more. Oh, that, uh, that kind of sucked. So in two spots there, because I had kind of rough sanded where I wanted epoxy, it peeled just a little bit of the outside, you know, uh, glassine layer on the actual body tube. Uh, I'm not too concerned about it at all, really, though, because like I said, this rocket still needs to be primed and painted and all that other stuff. Um, that was a good chance to get a good look at your fillets, too. See how smooth they are or aren't. Um, yeah. You're always going to have to sand, so don't worry if, you know, you peel the tape and you can see the thickness of epoxy there, you know, uh, you're, you'll sand that smooth. Like I said, the, the first purpose of a fillet is to strengthen the fin joint, um, especially on a rocket that doesn't have through the wall fins which some high-powered rockets don't. There are some like fiberglass and minimum diameters and stuff that won't go through the, the airframe. They'll just be tacked to the outside of the body tube, like, you know, some of the older style Estes kits, you know, your little balsa wood kits and stuff. Um, and that's where you want to make sure you have really good fillets. Because just a little bit of contact between the thin root and the body tube usually isn't enough. I mean, yeah, you'll probably get a few flights out of it, but it'll snap and break really easily. One rough landing and that's it. Yeah, I think I got a 
epoxy on my little rollers too. Every time I rotate the rocket, I hear. So, yeah. The first pieces of tape you want to pull do last. Like I said, I learn something new every time I do this. Um, I've never heard anyone mention that trick before, so. This fin, the, the epoxy's uh, rubberized basically, it's definitely tacking up and it kind of peeled up like a big white booger. I'm just trying to kind of reshape it a little here. I'll have to sand and reshape all that anyway, but I at least want it still in contact with the actual rocket itself. You know, I've never heard anyone talk about too, like when's the perfect time to mask or pull your masking and when's not. It, it's kind of hard to say. Um, you know, obviously you want it set up enough that the masking tape will make a nice clean break. But you don't want it set up so much so that you could literally epoxy the masking tape to the rocket as well. Um, so it's, it's kind of a kind of play it by ear. And I mean, you know, obviously that depends on the epoxy you use and that kind of stuff too. So. but you also don't want it to be running up and or down the rocket. So it's gotta be set up enough and tacky enough that it's not gonna go anywhere. Now let me check for See how much epoxy I've got on the rocket itself. Right. Get these gloves off real quick, and hopefully, I can give you guys a slightly better view of these. So, obviously, that's your, your side view. I know it's not the best lighting. But I would say, yeah, see how nice and curved those are? That's what you want. You want that nice smooth radius all the way up and down like on this fin. Now you can see in the back there it's a little glob, but like I said, that's all going to get sand shaped. I don't know if I can show that or not. Yeah, it's too hard. But anyway, that's the general idea there. Yep, sure shit. I got epoxy on my rollers. Well, I got a clean nose. So another reason you want thicker fillet material is because then you can do things like this instead of having it in a cradle or sitting on a table. If it's not running at all, you can stand it straight up. Um, so, all right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.